Hello everyone, welcome to yet another intriguing edition of Rahul's Advanced Biology. Today I will be bringing you a very ecstatic topic known as COVID-19 and dexamethasone, a specific scientific perspective. Now for the starters, I would like to inform you that the World Health Organization has already declared the SARS-CoV-2 induced COVID-19 as a global pandemic. More than 8 million people have been affected by it and more than 4 lakh people have already lost their lives. So scientists have been trying throughout the globe meticulously in order to come up with various vaccine regimen and various drugs in order to curb and contain this pandemic. In our previous videos, I've already talked about the virology, the pathophysiology, the drugs which are being used like remdesivir, tocilizumab, sanilimab, nironlimab, the CD147 receptor, the H2 receptor, the viral receptor, which is the primary receptor for SARS-CoV-2 to get entry into the cells. And I've also talked about favipiravir or avigan or avifavir. In India, it is now known as faviflu. So today I'll be talking about a very ecstatic trial which happened by the name of recovery trial in the United Kingdom and it showed immense potential for a specific glucocorticoid drug known as dexamethasone in attenuating symptoms of COVID-19 in severely ill patients who needed oxygen therapy and ventilator support. So in order to begin this lecture, I would like to debrief you with a specific biochemistry and molecular biology of glucocorticoids. Now glucocorticoids synthesized by zona fasciculator of the adrenal cortex and the entire process of synthesis of steroids or glucocorticoids is known as steroidogenesis. It occurs from the precursor molecule known as cholesterol in the mitochondria of the cells. Locally it is also produced by thymus and skin. What happens is the interleukin 1, TNF alpha, interleukin 6 is a pro inflammatory cytokines. They can go and bind to the hypothalamus and they can activate the HPA axis or hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis by which the commands can be sent to the adrenal cortex for the synthesis of these glucocorticoids, which would then dampen down the pro inflammatory cytokines and may also cause the activation or the release of anti-inflammatory anti cytokines like transforming growth factor beta and interleukin 10. What has been seen is that corticosteroid or glucocorticoid therapy has been seen or has been observed to dampen this pro-inflammatory cytokine response. What happens is the tissue cells, they express PRRs, pathogen recognition receptors which recognize pathogen associated membrane patterns and after recognition they specifically mast cells, macrophages, stromal cells to release the inflammatory mediators or pro-inflammatory cytokines like MIP, MCP, IL-1, IL-6 etc. And they then perpetuate a pro-inflammatory cytokine cascade. So this entire cascade can be dampened by the use of specific cortisol derivatives because cortisol is the main glucocorticoid synthesized in humans and corticosteroid or, or you can say corticosteroid is synthesized in rodents. Now cortisone is the inactive one. It is converted into cortisol by 11 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase enzymes, isotype 1 and 2 and then cortisol and its derivatives like dexamethasone, methylprednisolone. So these kinds of glucocorticoid derivative drugs with higher potency and efficacy, they reduce the pro-inflammatory cascade. They can shut down the signaling of TLR2, TLR4 also. They can down-regulate NF-kappa B pathway, nf AT pathway. Thereby, they can tame the innate immune response. They have also been found to bind to FC, epsilon receptor, thereby leading to the attenuation of histamine release by mast cells, thereby they help in allergic exaggeration or allergic symptoms. Also, it has been seen that the glucocorticoid therapy or glucocorticoid medication administration leads to the delay or inhibition in the maturation of T cell or the cell mediated T cell response via again inhibition of NF kappa B pathway, AP1 pathway also NF80 pathway. Also it down regulates the FOS gene 
and the specific kinases which upregulate the TCR or which are responsible for you can say activation of T cell receptor or TCR like ITK. So this is also has this specific things have also been noticed in various review papers published in scientific journals like Nature Cell or Science. Now when our body gets to resolve or there is something which is causing inflammation. So inflammation has mainly three phases. The alarm phase, then the mobilization phase and then comes the eventual resolution phase. In the alarm phase, the specific pro-inflammatory cytokines are released. In the, in the mobilization phase what happens is the various neutrophils and eosinophils, so you can see leukocytes, they mobilize, they extravasate, they adhere to tissues, adhesion, extravasation, rolling, all these phenomena take place. In the resolution phase, the tissue debris is cleared off. So what happens is, this specific glucocorticoid therapy has also been found to inhibit or to downregulate, to do, you can say, reduce the expression of cell adhesion molecules of like integrins, CD44, VLA4, very late antigen 4 on leukocytes, so that they cannot extravasate. Then during the resolution phase, this glucocorticoid therapy along with resolvents and various other molecules, defensins, they act synergistically in order to clear the cell debris. So this specific dexamethasone arm present in the recovery trial UK, comprised of 2100 patients. They were each administered a low dose of 6 mg dexamethasone for 10 days and they were compared with the 4300 individuals in the arm which comprised of you can say regular COVID-19 therapies like remdesivir, tocilizumab and so on. Then uh, the consequence of the result of the study really baffled and really caused e ecstasy to proliferate in the scientific community because the patients who were really severely ill, who were either on oxygen support or either on ventilators because they were needing ventilator in order to cope up with their ARDS and pneumonia. So these patients present or comprising or they were involved in the dexamethasone arm, they showed the magnificent improvement. Their death rate or demise rate or mortality rate was cut by 20%. The maximum improvement was shown in the severely ill COVID-19 patients requiring either oxygen therapy or ventilator support. It did not really attenuate the condition or state of, you can say, mild to moderately ill COVID-19 patients. And after this, after the result declaration, the UK government has already declared, has a, or you can say has already ordered its doctors to administer dexamethasone to severely ill COVID-19 patients. Yesterday only World Health Organization has also approved the use of dexamethasone in COVID-19 patients. But a word of caution and my speculation about this study is various papers in the past studying MERS, which is a type of coronavirus, SARS-CoV-1, which caused SARS in 2003. They studied the effect of corticosteroids and glucocorticoids in severely ill patients or in mild to moderately ill patients suffering from MERS or SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome. So there this specific corticosteroid therapy was not found to be helpful. What it did, what it did was it dampened the immune response and if you over dampen the immune response then you can have catastrophic damage because the immune response cannot fight back with the virus, the innate immunity and the T cell maturation can be over exaggeratedly dampened and then it could lead to viral load increase in the system. Same thing was found against influenza A, B or C. The administration of these specific glucocorticoid drugs did not yield any positive result and it resulted in increase in viral load and increase in mortality. So this is a study, you can say one of a kind study and it still requires further mechanism of elucidation you can say. It needs, the mechanism behind it needs to be elucidated further to show how it can really lower the viral load 
in critically ill COVID-19 patients affected by SARS-CoV-2 virus. What it could be doing is it could be dampening the T cell response or the T cell maturation till action but not completely till action as far as I am concerned as far as my knowledge is concerned it could be dampening the T cell response the B cell response and the innate immunity till an extent because low dose was you can say administered not very high dose so it would be keeping the immune response at bay as you can say a constant state of immunomodulation not hyper not hypo so it could be balancing the immunomodulation and thereby immune system would be able to attack would be able to mount an offense via innate and cellular immunity or cell mediated immunity but it would be also damping up the immune system and thereby not causing or not letting the immune system express too much of pro-inflammatory mediators and thereby not really letting the CRS or cytokine release syndrome which I have talked about dearly in my previous videos of tocilizumab and you can say enolimab and IL-6 and my next videos where I will be putting up IL-1 and GM-CSF inhibitors. So those kinds of specifically the CRS, the cytokine release syndrome or element terms known as cytokine response, cytokine storm. So this really causes the ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome and which further manifests into pneumonia or pneumonitis in the lungs that eventually leads to lung edema and eventual demise of the patient. So it's a very, very, you can say promising trial, a fruitful trial, a magnificent trial. A ray of hope has been ignited. So one can hope that this dexamethasone really comes out with flying colors in other trials also and ultimately gets a nod from the Food and Drug Administration USA so that it can be used throughout the world. It can save the critically ill or severely ill COVID-19 patients. So that's all the conceptual progress that you need to attain in order to understand and comprehend this lecture. If you were able to decipher the lecture properly and if you did like the video then kindly hit the, hit, kindly hit the like button. Also in the description section below I have posted all the links of my other COVID-19 videos and the research papers that I have referred in order to produce this video and also the link of my Facebook page is also given in the description section below so that you can contact me from that link via messenger to get my prompt reply. And if you have any queries, any doubts remaining in your minds, then kindly do not hesitate to post it in the comment section below. I'll be trying to reply as soon as possible. If you like this video, then kindly subscribe to my channel Rahul's Advanced Biology and do not forget to hit the notification bell in order to receive my new content as soon as it comes online. Thanks a lot and see you soon.